Whoa! <laughs> Good morning, 12 Stone. I'm Lindsay, this is Josh. Hey. And we're excited to be the first people to wish you a Happy, Happy New, New Year! year. Boo, 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 boo. It's 2023, you made it through last year, and today we're gonna take some time and celebrate all that God did last year and celebrate what he's going to do this year. Yes, and hey, if you guys watch our Christmas Eve services, then you probably saw a recap highlighting all the impact that we got to make. Lindsay, did you bring that clip? Of course I did. Look at this. Let's show Check this people. out. Oh, Paul Neiman. Look at Paul. Oh, Love that guy. Goodness. All right, you guys already watched it, so you, you get it. But hey, if you want to be a part of the impact uh, that you just saw in this video, all you got to do is text GIVE to 37748. Yes. Easy. And hey, don't go anywhere because right oh, after what? this, we have. Josh, what? we got it this way. Oh, my bad. Hi, David. Uh, right after this, we have a teaching from our campus pastor, Steve Walton. Yep. But a couple things that we want to keep you in the know on. So, Lindsay, why don't you tell us? The first thing is next Friday at our Lawrence Hill campus only. In person only, we have a call to worship. Yes. It's gonna be great. We're gonna to worship together. We're gonna to pray together. We're gonna to take communion together. It's gonna to be incredible. Lawrenceville campus only, in person only, no registration needed, just show up. Come where, as you are. Where was it again? Lawrenceville campus. <laughs> hey, on February 10th, we have a date night for married couples. So if you're married, put it on a calendar. You don't wanna miss it. It's gonna be great. Hey, we're gonna have a slide at the end of the teaching with all of this information so you can put it on your calendar, you can jot it down. But for now, let's get into the teaching. Stevie O the Wonder Walton. Take it away. No one calls him that. I call him that. That's literally his contact phone. Our contact phone is contact name in my phone. Hey, so happy new year. Come on, you made it. 2023. Man, this is it. It's the uh, it's a new year, which means it feels like a fresh start, doesn't it? Uh, and listen, I know that you know this. This is just another day, but for some reason it always feels like it's like it's new, like it's a it's a it's a new beginning, it's a it's a fresh start. Uh, it makes me think of a show that Catherine and I really got into, okay? Now, before I tell you what show it was, I just, just don't judge me, okay? Um, Catherine and I got really into this, like, cleaning show, okay? Now, again, I, I'm, I'm not like a cleaning guy, okay? I'm not a neat freak. I don't watch <laughs> cleaning shows, but, like, everyone kept telling us, you gotta watch the show, you gotta watch the show, like, you gotta watch the show. So, the show that we watched, and maybe you remember this, was called Tidying Up with Marie Kondo, okay, do you remember this? She would like, this woman would go into people's homes and their homes were a mess and she would go up and she would like help them declutter and organize and by the end of the show, it's like they had a brand new house. And I can't explain it, but we got so into the show and we didn't just like binge the show, like we did the show, okay? We decluttered our house. We got rid of a whole bunch of stuff. We took multiple trips to Goodwill. The conversation around our house was, Catherine, does that spark joy for you? If not, get rid of it, okay? Like we were so into the show and we weren't the only ones. Like everyone seemed to be into this show, which is so weird. Like why would everyone all of a sudden be into a cleaning show? And here's why. Because the show debuted on January 1st, 2019. See, there's something about that day that makes you feel like I wanna declutter, I want it to be new, I want, a, I want a fresh start. And again, we know it's just another day, but it always feels like a fresh start. And so maybe for you, even now, you're thinking like, this year is gonna be a fresh start for me. It's a chance for me to be the the husband that I've wanted to be, a chance to be the wife or the, or the mom or the dad that I've always wanted to be, the student I've always wanted to be, the friend, the boss, the employee. Like, this is a chance to be the person that I've always wanted to be. And it feels like you get a fresh start. And the beautiful thing about our faith is that our faith is all about a fresh start. Like, all over scripture, you see this theme of fresh start. Like, one of my favorite verses is, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone, okay? It went to goodwill, Marie Kondo got rid of it, and the new is here. Like, you're a new person because of Jesus. And yet, when you look at every time Scripture mentions fresh start, it's really interesting. Because every fresh start doesn't begin by looking forward. In Scripture, a fresh start begins by looking back. Like, for instance, when you, um, there's a story of the people of God that have been rescued from slavery in Egypt, and Pharaoh let them go, they're getting ready to go to the promised land, and the first thing God does was have them celebrate a Passover meal. And in this Passover meal, he actually calls it a memorial day. It's a day to remember. In other words, hey, before you look forward, I want you to look back. Like, before you are freed, I want you to remember who freed you. 
And then they were rescued and they get right to the edge of the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army is behind them and the Red Sea is in front of them and Moses lifts up the staff and the waters part and the people cross over on dry ground and right as they finish that, getting ready to go to the promised land, like they are at the edge of the fresh start, the first thing Moses does is he calls everyone together and he says, hey, remember today. In other words, before looking forward, I want you to look, look back. And then when they get to the edge of the promised land, the Jordan River is right between them and they cross over the Jordan River. The first thing they do when they are this close to the promised land is they go back, they get 12 rocks and they stack it up as a memorial. Actually, this is where we get the name of our church from, 12 Stone Church, and they stack up this memorial. Why? To remember. In other words, before looking forward, they wanted to look back. And that's the way a fresh start always works in Scripture. And so for, for Catherine and I, every time it's a new year, a fresh start, the first thing we do is we look back. Um, we take some time and we just look back on the things that God did last year. We, we remember like the highs and the lows and uh, we'll actually write it down. For the past almost 10 years, every new year, we, um, we always uh, like have a dinner together and we talk about what happened last year. In fact, um, this is, the, this is my journal from 2019. And um, uh, uh, right at the end of it, um, December 30th, 2019, we had this dinner and we wrote down the things that we saw God do. And again, these, are, you know, these aren't all massive things. Some of them are really simple. Like, like I put great coffee. And in 2019, we had a lot of great coffee and so we were grateful for that. But then we put big things like anchor can hear. Um, my middle son was having difficulty hearing. He was failing every hearing test, but it was in 2019 that he actually was able to hear. And so at the end of the year, we said, hey, look at what God did. Our son is able to hear. Um, we, we wrote down our vacations. Like normally when, when we take vacations, we just kind of move on to the next thing. But at the end of this year, we said, hold on, we got to go on vacation as a family. That's pretty awesome. And then we wrote down, this was, this was my first year at Buford. And so we we thank God for that. It was Judah's first year playing baseball. And we just started listing all the things that happened last year. Because before we moved forward with our fresh start, we just wanted to take a moment and remember. And so maybe one of the best things that you can do as a family is just take some time and remember. Like maybe tonight, when you have dinner, instead of everyone grabbing their meal and going to their own room or grabbing their meal and also picking up their phone and just kind of checking out things on their phone, maybe instead of doing that, maybe you take a moment and go around the table and you just talk about what God did last year. Talk about what you're grateful for from last year. I mean, listen, you can even do that right now. You can, you can press pause and talk about it with your family. And don't worry, I'll be, I'll be here when you get back, okay? Um, but maybe you can just have that conversation to look back on the things that you're grateful for. That before you move forward, just take a moment to look back. See, this is, a, this is a big deal for those of us that follow Jesus. Because for us, those of us that follow Jesus, we've been forgiven. <laughs> like we are known by God and loved by God, fully known and fully loved and forgiven. In, in other words, we have a fresh start and the reason we have a fresh start is because of Jesus. In other words, our fresh start of being forgiven begins by looking back 2,000 years ago at what Jesus did for us, that he laid down his life so that we could have a fresh start. In fact, this is the whole reason that we do communion. It's because we, we always wanna take a moment and remember where our fresh start comes from. The reason that we're forgiven is because the body of Jesus was broken for us. And the reason that we're known by God and loved by him is because the blood of Jesus was shed for us. See, and here's what's really interesting. When, when, when the disciples actually celebrated this communion with Jesus, the meal that they had was the Passover meal. In other words, this was Jesus gathering them up and they thought they were just gonna talk about being rescued from slavery in Egypt, but Jesus said, no, this is actually about being rescued from slavery from sin. And this bread doesn't just represent the unleavened bread that you had to grab as you were being freed from Egypt. This bread represents my body that's broken for you. And this isn't just a cup that you drink. This represents my blood that's shed for you. See, for those of us that follow Jesus, celebrating communion is a sacred thing. 
It's remembering where our fresh start actually comes from. And it's why it matters so much that we gather together and we have communion together. We're actually gonna be doing that on January 13th. The call to worship is gonna be a moment when we all gather together, when we kind of put our stake in the ground and say, hey, this year, I'm gonna follow after Jesus with everything I've got. This year, I'm gonna worship him. And on that day, we're gonna gather together and we're gonna actually celebrate communion. Because yes, we have a fresh start. And yes, we're gonna look forward, but it always begins by looking back. And then after you take a moment to remember what God has done, then you've got a chance to look forward, to dream, to imagine what could God do with, with this fresh start that I've got? Like what could God do in 2023? And you start to dream and imagine that being the husband that you've wanted to be, the wife that you've wanted to be, the, the mom, dad, or student, boss, employee, friend that you've always wanted to be. And the beautiful thing is we get to, we get to dream about that together with God, about what he has for this next year. So listen, we've got a fresh start. And the question is, well, what do I do with my fresh start? See, because we've been here before, right? We've been January 1st, fill in the blank before. So how do I actually use this fresh start that God has given us? And so to answer that question, I wanna lean into the wisdom of Moses. <laughs> the same Moses that God raised up to rescue the people from slavery in Egypt. The same Moses that grabbed the staff and the waters parted. As you study the life of Moses, what you find out is that over and over again, God gave him fresh start after fresh start, after fresh start. I mean, if there's anyone that knows what it's like to have a fresh start, it's Moses. And on this one occasion, Moses actually wrote a psalm. It was a prayer to God where he looked back, he remembered all that God had done, and then in the middle of the psalm, he actually looks forward. And scholars actually believe that this psalm, it's Psalm 90, was actually written by Moses right after they were rescued from slavery in Egypt and right before beginning the journey to the promised land. So here's Moses, right at the edge of his fresh start. He remembers what God has done, and then he looks forward, and then he gives some advice for how to use the fresh start, and it's in the form of a prayer, and I gotta warn you, this isn't like a normal piece of advice that you'd think of when you think of having a fresh start, but here's what Moses prays. Psalm 90, verse 12. He says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Okay, so again, I admit, this isn't normally what you hear when you think of having a fresh start. Like normally the advice that you're given is you gotta believe in yourself or you know, you do you, or you, know, you just gotta make sure you, you give it all you got, okay? But that's not the advice that Moses gives. See, he doesn't say seize the day. He says, number your days. In other words, our days are limited. Like, listen, we've got a fresh start in this new year, but there's only 365 days. We've got a limited number of days. And Moses says, you wanna make sure you make every one of those days count. And he actually makes it even bigger than just the fresh start that we've got this year. In the Psalm, Moses says, we've got a limited number of days for our life. <laughs> he actually, at one point in the Psalm, he says, what does our life even account to? Like 70 years, 80 if we're lucky? And if you're like me, when you read that, you're like, chill out, Moses, you're really like harsh in the vibe right here, you know? It's like, let's, let's not get too depressing. But what he's saying is our, our days are limited. See, our, our days are numbered. They're limited. And don't miss this. So are our fresh starts. On earth, we have a limited number of days and we have a limited number of fresh starts as well. And so Moses is saying, trust me, you don't, want to waste this fresh start. Because every fresh start that you and I have is eventually going to end. And it always ends one of two ways. Either I'm so glad I did, or I wish I had. And so maybe even for you, as you think back to last year, there's a realization of, man, I wish I had. Like, like I wish I had spent more time with my kids. I really wanted to. And it, and I wish I had. Um, I wish I'd tried harder at, at work. I, man, I wish I'd tried harder in my marriage. I wish I'd gone to church more. 
I wish I'd prayed more. I, man, I wish I would have finished that project. Like it's easy for us when we look back to recognize, man, I, I wish I had. And what Moses is saying is when you look forward, you gotta remember this fresh start is gonna end and it's either gonna end with, I'm so glad I did or I wish I had. So don't waste it. His prayer is, God, would you give me wisdom to use this fresh start so that I live in such a way that when I get to the end of it, I can say, I'm so glad that I did. And so something I've been doing for the past six or seven years is every time I get to the beginning of a new year, I, I take that moment and I ask God, okay, God, how can I spend this fresh start wisely? Because I've got a limited number of days. I've got 365 days. God, what do you want to do with this fresh start that I've got? And for me, it's just easier to kind of think about life in, in five different areas. And this is actually my list from last year. And the five areas are family, work, faith, health, and finances. And so I'll pray through each of these areas and say, okay, God, how do you want me to spend my fresh start with my family? And so last year, um, I was just realizing I was spending way too much time on my phone. And so I said, God, I think a wise thing for me to do would be between 5 and 8 p.m. every day, if I put my phone aside and I spent more time with my kids and my wife. I think that would be a, a really good way to spend this year. And um, being honest, I wish I had. Like I, I set the goal and there were some days that I did that, but more often than not, when I got home, I, I would still be working and I'd be on my phone or, or, I mean, you know how it is, you get to the end of the day and you're just really exhausted and it's just easier to pick up the phone. And now that I get to the end of the year, I look back and I go, man, I wish I had. I wish I had put my phone away more. I wish I had spent more time with my kids. But listen, here's the, here's the good news for me and for you. We've got a fresh start. Like today, that can change. Today, we can ask God for wisdom and help to go, okay, God, starting today, I'm not gonna do that anymore. Starting today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my phone aside and I'm gonna invest in my kids. I'm gonna spend time with my kids and my wife. And so maybe for you, you're, you're looking forward and you're going, God, I need a fresh start with my kids. Or maybe it's, I, I need a fresh start with my spouse. Something Catherine and I fell out of the habit of is, is date nights. We haven't really been doing those because the kids are young, we've got all these reasons, but it's just been hard. And over the past couple months, we actually kind of worked out a deal with one of my neighbors who's a 12 stoner, and they've got three young kids and we've got three young kids. And, and so every other week, we'll take care of each other's kids. I'll babysit and then they'll babysit. So every other week, we can each go on a date night. And so, listen, Jay and Whitney, you're a part of our fresh start. Like we're going on date nights now because of this. In other words, we've got a fresh start in our marriage and you do too. Maybe as you're thinking about your marriage, you're going, God, I... We really need a fresh start in our relationship. Or maybe it's work. Like maybe you're asking God for, for help. In fact, as I go through this list, even now, you just begin talking to God. Say, all right, God, which one is it? Which one do I need a fresh start in? And so maybe it's work. Maybe it's being more intentional at work or focused or, or maybe it's applying for that job you've always wanted to. But you know, you gotta have a fresh start. There's goals I set for the fresh start last year. And then faith. Faith is a big one for us. And so I set some, some goals of, God, what do I want to do with my fresh start? And, and it was about when I woke up and, and um, spending time reading scripture and praying and specifically what I wanted to read. And maybe that's similar to what you want to do this year. Or maybe if you're honest, you're looking back and you're going, man, I wish I'd spent more time like at church. And so maybe for you, maybe for you today, you just need to hear God saying, hey, you've got a fresh start. Whatever habits you've had in the past, you don't have to keep doing those habits. You can have a fresh start today. Maybe one of the most spiritual things you can do is make a commitment, hey, next week, January 8th, I'm showing up to a campus. Man, I used to go, it's been a long time, but you know what, I'm gonna show up to that campus or maybe showing up to your 12-stone home gathering. 
Like, don't miss what God wants to do gathered together with other people, worshiping God together, sitting under teaching together. And listen, I was, I was talking to Jason about where we're going um, over these next couple weeks, and I'm telling you, you do not wanna miss the next four weeks. He's literally talking about how to have a fresh start in your faith. He's talking about four steps that you and I can take, and I promise you, if you lean in and you actually do these four things, you will grow in your faith. The fresh start you've been wanting can actually happen. And it begins with a decision right now to say, okay, God, give me a heart of wisdom. I've got a limited number of days. I've got a limited number of fresh starts. And I'm gonna begin by showing up next week. I'm gonna begin by actually being there at a campus or actually being at my 12 stone home gathering. And then I've got health and, and finances, um, what I wanted to have a fresh start with my health, I wanted to work out three times a week. And you could ask my um, accountability partner, I've got a guy that keeps me accountable for this. Um, I hit three times a week every week. I'm just kidding, no. I maybe hit like once a week, okay? I was real bad about this, honestly. I look back and I go, yeah, I wish I had. That was, that was not good. But listen, we've got a fresh start, okay? So you got a fresh start in your health or a fresh start in your finances, setting goals about how much you wanna give, or save, or budget, and spend. But the point is, God has given you a fresh start. Don't miss this. There is a limited number of days, a limited number of fresh starts that we've had. And Moses says, don't, trust me, you don't wanna waste your fresh start. You don't wanna end your year by thinking, I wish I had. So the prayer is, God, would you give me wisdom to know what to do with my fresh start? And so here's how I wanna end our, our time together. I wanna pray over you. And even now as I'm getting ready to pray, man, I would ask that you think of, and maybe it's helpful to write it down, where is it that you need a breakthrough? Which of these five areas do you sense God leading you towards for a fresh start? And I want you to bring that to mind so that I can pray over you about where you need a fresh start. And so let me pray. And so God, right now, God, I have some friends that need a fresh start with their kids. And as they look back, um, they're saying, I wish I had spent more time with my kids. Maybe I'm upset with the way that I've talked to my kids. And today, God, you would whisper, it doesn't have to stay that way. So God, would you give them a fresh start with their kids right now? Would you tell them, would you show them, God, what it looks like to spend more time with them and to talk with them, to encourage them to be in their life? God, for my friends that need a fresh start in their marriage, some of them maybe, maybe wouldn't even dare to ask that because it feels like it's too far gone. I pray that you would whisper to them right now, it's not too late. There's a fresh start available for you God, I, I, I've personally seen how you have rescued marriages and you can do it with these marriages right now as my friends are praying and asking you. So God, would you give them a fresh start in their marriage? God, for my friends that need a fresh start at work, would they obey you? Would they listen to you? Would you, would you give them patience and self-control to do the things that you're asking them to do at work? For my friends that need a fresh start with their faith, God, I pray that they would obey you. I pray that they would listen to you. And God, maybe the most spiritual thing they can do is simply drive to the campus or show up to their 12 stone home. God, I pray that you would take that small step of obedience and you would unlock some things for them so that their, so that their faith would grow. God, over these next four weeks, would you help their faith grow? Would you give them a fresh start in their faith so they would look back and say it was January 1st 2023, when everything changed. God, would you give them that fresh start? For my friends that need a breakthrough in their finances or their health, God, I pray that they would listen to you. Would you give them the wisdom to know what they need to do and then the courage to go do it? And then God, I wanna pray over my friends um, the way that Moses prays right at the end of Psalm 90. He says, may the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. In other words, God, we can't do this by ourselves. 
We can't rescue our family by ourselves. We can't renew our faith by ourselves. God, we need your help. So may your favor rest on us. And then establish the work of our hands. Yes, establish the work of our hands. God, the things that you lead us to do, would you give us the strength to go do those things, the boldness to follow through so that we end this year, this fresh start, by saying, I'm so glad that I did. Jesus, thank you for the fresh start that you have given us. We love you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So hey, we'll see you next week.